Welcome to the Reykjanes Peninsula of Iceland. Here in southwest Iceland, we're in the Krishuvik volcanic system, uh, just off of road 42. Nice view down this way of Lake Krevravat, uh, off in the distance. And I had some time today as I was driving through here, and the last few times I've been through here, I've been kind of intrigued by this narrow canyon, this gash uh, in the hillside here. You can see the, the outwash, the uh, dry stream bed here in front of us that drains out of this canyon. So I thought we'd just take a little adventure here and wander up there and see what we find. Thanks for joining me. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. Again, here in Iceland, we're just gonna do a little impromptu adventure, wander up this canyon here and see what we find. I've just been intrigued before driving past this spot, wondering what it looks like up there. So let's go ahead on up the wash here and we'll see what we find. So yeah, again, just really nice day today. No wind, really good temperatures, not raining just yet. So good time to maybe take a little adventure like this and see what we can see. Uh, you can see the narrow gully here as we get up closer to the canyon. The mouth of the canyon's just up ahead. And this ridge in all the looking at rocks I've done here previously uh, is a what we call a, a tindar as a volcanic landform. Basically we had fissure eruptions here in the past when this area was covered by glacial ice and those eruptions beneath the ice uh, were explosive. They built up a ridge of volcanic debris and breccia, what we sometimes call hyaloclastite. And that has built up this ridge beneath the ice. The ice is now eroded away and so we have this prominent landform, this ridge that runs northeast, southwest uh, through this part of Iceland and uh, forms sort of the, you know, parallel to the plate boundary. And you'll see these prominent ridges that sort of crop out here in various parts of the Reykjanes Peninsula. So, not sure what to expect. In terms of rock types, I think I have a good idea. Should be seeing obviously a lot of basalt, but more specifically, these fragmented volcanic breaches that define these subglacial eruptions. But what I'm even more intrigued with is how, what this canyon looks like. Is it like a true slot canyon? like we might find in Death Valley or parts of the Colorado Plateau in the US. Now, knowing that the rocks are not necessarily uniform, they're not homogeneous, they're a little bit different depending on how big the particles are. You can see right here in front of me, the particle size is very small, more like a tuff, a volcanic tuff in this brown zone here. Um, but as we move up, it looks like there's more particles. It's more blocky and rugged as we move up. And of course, in these narrow, dark uh, slots, these canyons, probably, you know, <laughs> probably a good likelihood we'll get kind of cliffed out here. In fact, I can't quite see. I'm hoping the canyon goes further to the left there, or we could, this could be a very short adventure where it ends as we just hit like a big dry fall in front of us. But you can see the brown tufts. Maybe we'll go up this little hill here first, take a look at the rocks before we go up the canyon a bit further. But these brown bedded tufts here, you can see are, are tilted. Uh, dipping fairly gently off to the, I guess that would be the west or northwest. And then, interestingly, I haven't seen this before, there is a layer up here of almost 
shale-like rock. You can see the rock layers here in front of us are again tilted at an angle, but are made out of much more fine-grained particles than what we've seen previously. Um, so kind of interesting, these might be lake bed deposits, potentially. Um, usually tuff doesn't layer this, this thin, thinly. Um, interesting. Yeah, this stuff breaks up like shale. I guess it does feel a little grittier. It does feel a little bit more like sand-sized particles. But then there's a real sharp contact here between these fine-grained, thin beds and what looks to be more just massive basalt. So you can really see that contact kind of coming in here and then heading up along the hillside towards the ridge line there. So really interesting contact there. Um, this basalt here, this could be a dike potentially. It also could be just more of this really fragmented basaltic rocks as we look back up the way. That's dominantly what we're seeing. We're not seeing any pillows, so pillow lavas would be what you might expect to see at the very base of these tindar, these subglacial um, landforms, because they would have formed when the ice and magma were interacting, but it was still fairly deep below the uh, glacier. The glacial ice was still quite thick. So here we are at this point here, and I think, I think the adventure ends pretty abruptly. Um, there's a dry fall right here. So when they, when they get rain, this thing would make a nice little waterfall. You can see the notch up there, but right now with it being dry, um, it's just a big dry fall. Let's see if we can get over this little hill and look. Yeah, at the little, tiny little plunge pool here. So there's the base of the dry fall. You can see the striations of the rock there as the water pours over the edge, carrying bits of rock and sediment. It leaves those striations there. And we can still see this prominent um, contact between the more fine-grained tuff, which does have a few larger particles, and this more blocky basalt that sits just above it. So you actually can trace that contact out a little bit. Very cool. Well, after our short-lived adventure, I thought I'd try to scramble around and see if I could re-enter the canyon uh, above the dry fall, but it does not look like that's going to be possible. Uh, pretty much cliffed out here. It's a little too spicy for my taste to try to go any further. But you can see the gash here. That is the continuation uh, of the canyon up further, uh, mainly in this very blocky uh, breccia that you're seeing here in front of us. Um, but we did get, even though the adventure at least going up the canyon is over. Uh, we do have a really spectacular view from here, looking out towards uh, Lake Clevervat there in the distance, and just down to just the beautiful uh, hillsides here in Iceland. This ridge across the way from us is a great example of one of these tindars. You can see how flat it is on top, kind of forming a mesa. So it's capped with just regular lava flows, but you might be able to pick out along the slopes there that it's maybe a little bit different color, uh, more of a reddish color, and the material that makes up the slopes over there uh, is most likely what we're seeing over here, this more fragmented uh, breccia or hyaloclastite from when the volcano was erupting through the ice, but there wasn't so much pressure on the lava to make pillows, and so it's more fragmental, more explosive, and you get this more broken uh, pyroclastic type deposit there just below the top. And then once the uh, volcano has built up substantial material and it's above the, the water or ice interaction line, then it just starts forming regular basalts uh, like we see there along the ridge line. So that's more of the 
just capped with that typical basalt surface there. But a uh, pretty fun adventure nonetheless. Um, nice little jaunt up the canyon as far as we could go. Kind of ended before it really began, but we saw some cool things. Well, hey, thanks for joining me on this fun little adventure up this unnamed canyon in the Krishovic volcanic system here on the Reykjanes Peninsula. Appreciate your support of the channel. Uh, there are links under the video description if you'd like to donate to the cause, and we'll see you next time. Thanks so much.